Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on Introduction to Computational Fluid Dynamics. This is first of the lectures in the series of online lectures being offered by CC Tech, short form for Center for Computational Technologies. My name is Sam Matthew and I'll be taking you through the next 45 minute session to explain to you and to introduce you to give you a brief overview of what CFD is as this uh, that we are seeing on this uh, screen here. Um, it's not just geometry, but in often, in uh, more often than not, actually we are limited as far as defining the exact physics in terms of mathematical equations are concerned. So we have a general transport equation which I'll be discussing, which I think my colleague will be discussing more specifically. Uh, general transport equation for a quantity phi, the quantity phi being different values representing different equations. Uh, to actually solve them on real geometries is quite a challenging task. So if we don't want to deal with uh, actual calculations, we have another process which is called the experimental studies. But before that, we can see that analytical fluid dynamics is quite limited for geometry sake as well as physics sake. So we have experimental studies. We have, uh, uh, we have a scale down model often. Uh, based on engineering uh, dimensional analysis. It's not arbitrary, it's based on dimensional analysis that we create a prototype of the product, a scale down laboratory scale model. We perform um, an appropriate um, experiment under conditions which would reflect what would happen in reality and we put in a lot of probe points. Now when we put these probe points, that's one of the limitations that um, actually we end up introducing a lot of disturbances in the flow. And often it's quite difficult to manufacture a real prototype and to be able to perform such an experiment in a laboratory uh, setup and uh, the cost also goes up. So we are again not able to solve the typical issues that we are bound to face. That is in terms of time, cost and feasibility. Analytical fluid dynamics is surely um, we are able to find out some solution that we are able to capture the actual physics in some cases, not on the real geometry often, but on the scale down model. But we are having problems with cost and feasibility. And that's why we have CFD. Now compare this heat sink performance, which uh, the image that you see besides your on the right side of your screen. Now in CFD what we are doing is we have the mathematical model clearly defined, that's the physics, and this physics uh, equations which are usually partial differential equations are being solved through numerical methods. They are not being solved analytically or actually through real uh, integration but we are using some numerical methods to uh, dis with, with, with the assumption that uh, we can neglect some higher order terms or we can use a computer to solve them we end up having a CFD result, a result which is a numerical solution of your physics. The advantages are quite very many. We have a low cost uh, simulation. Now here is the word simulation that comes that we are able to solve these equations. It's a low cost solution. We are able to do a lot of, sim a lot of analysis within a very short period of time. That's because we don't have to actually make the physical models, but it's a short variation in the sum parameters on the computer, which uh, because the computers are quite fast nowadays, even a desktop computer can perform the task of a quite uh, considerable amount of complexity um, involved in a given problem. CFD is able to solve it. So we are having low cost, we are having quite good speed and additionally we are also able to have comprehensive information and that's very important aspect compared to an experimental study that we are able to have information not just at selected points but we are having them at a huge number of points. That's on the different mesh elements I'll be speaking about later on. Uh, what is a mesh? Now these are different probe points within your domain where you want to get the results. Now that's what the power of CFD is that you don't introduce any errors by introducing any probe points, but we are able to get data at many more points as compared to an experimental study. If we try to compare experiments and simulations, this is one of the very great advantages that we are able to have a very clear 
quantitative as well as qualitative of course the images that you see are usually the qualitative studies of a given system based on CFT but we are able to have qualitative and quantitative analysis using simulations we are able to have not just one or two or few quantities being analyzed but we are having several quantities being analyzed with high resolution not just at limited number of probe points and we are a often able to model the real geometry if the physics is clearly defined we are able to uh, model the real geometry and we can perform idealistic simulations we can also simulate ideal conditions and the realistic operating conditions nevertheless of course there are errors in both cases and we have to be aware of the errors before handling any tool so that we can count on the reliability of a given tool for analyzing a given problem so we are having uh, problems in experiments because of measurement errors flow disturbances in CFD on the other hand it's often at the level of the user that's also in experiments of course the user can make mistakes in measurements but in CFD the errors are often at the level because of lack of knowledge of the user or let's say the user is not very well familiar with which models need to be included into the given simulation a given setup of the problem So that's what we are trying to help you with through this course that we are trying to improve your knowledge of CFD tools and their capabilities in including different physics and uh, CFD can give us good results or simulations can give us good results if we are well familiar with how to do an appropriate model of course there are also some errors on the part of the computer or also the numerical schemes again numerical schemes we can try to improve and we can reduce the errors but of course we are using a computer usually which has limited precision and this error we cannot completely get rid of but we can see that most of the cases these errors are quite insignificant compared to the the insight that you obtain through simulations a snapshot of what experiments and simulations uh, differ in in which points we can see that experiments and simulations they have their advantages and disadvantages but simulations score over the experiments often because of being cheaper of course it's a relative matter if the manpower uh, gets uh, more enhanced of course the cost of the of the employee also increases who will perform the simulations so it's not always that it is always cheap the software licensing fees are also a challenge but often much cheaper than actually making many prototypes and performing experiments besides we are getting uh, comprehensive information and quite fast results compared to real experiments but CFD simulation results are not always 100% reliable we have to be f aware of what are the reasons what are the circumstances under which these things are not reliable and we'll see this that the reliability is in question because sometimes at the part of the user there's a too much there's too much of guessing as far as the constraints of the problem are concerned or too many approximations involved to reduce the timeline or reduce the complexity of the CFD problem even and that's where the lack of accuracy comes in too much of guessing on the part of the boundary conditions or geometrical simplifications or also because of the computer which can uh, result in uh, lack of accuracy because the computer has limited precision and of course if the user is not well familiar with the mathematical model that needs to be included into your problem there can be also modeling errors we'll be looking at it more exactly in the subsequent slides let's just understand what CFD is so CFD is basically a tool by which we have a qualitative and quantitative prediction of fluid flows any flow phenomena for that me for that reason so therefore I would rather term CFD as computational flow dynamics than just fluid dynamics please don't limit yourself to just fluid dynamic studies we can analyze any phenomena where there is flow involved first of all we need to have the mathematical model clearly defined once we have the mathematical model we use some numerical methods to solve the governing equations that's usually partial differential equations in integral or differential form when they are solved using numerical methods using some software tools involving different steps we end up having a nice setup for analyzing and parametrically studying several design points several uh, geometrical designs as well as operating designs so in short CFD is the science of predicting fluid heat or any other transport phenomena by solving the mathematical equations which govern these processes 
and we are using a computer which uh, has a soft I mean often it's a software which runs on a computer which has these equations being solved using numerical methods so that's the usual procedure we have the geometry being built up let's say it's a flow through such a bent and uh, we have the problem set up we have uh, the geometry being defined into smaller fragments being broken down or segregated into smaller fragments that's what a mesh is so what we are doing actually is defining some probe points where we want the analysis to be done and we define the boundary conditions which which make the solution inside the domain unique and once we have the boundary conditions defined the problem set up we actually use a computer to solve this problem so computer's role comes here and ultimately of course we want to visualize the results we get a lot of data points and at all these probe points but just the numbers will not make sense for us therefore we try to use some visualization tools to analyze the results so CFD is overall is a three-step procedure actually CFD consists of pre-processing step where we define the geometry where we define what my domain of interest is and this domain is of course afterwards broken down into smaller fragments that is what a mesh generation step is I'll take you through some examples which will define this mesh we set up the problem that's boundary conditions once the problem has been defined we ask the given software on the computer to solve it we can very well do it also through hand calculations but it will take a long time so therefore we have different software packages available for doing this task for us that's solving the equations we can include additional models as required by the physics and the numerical methods are also defined at the solver stage and we are solving the whole problem once we get the numbers we get all the values at different probe points we are analyzing them through color plots contour plots through appropriate graphs graphical representations or let's say we have also specific numbers like the drag force or the lift force how much quantitatively is the heat transfer occurring and subsequent to this we can also derive numbers like Nusselt number which define heat transfer coefficient for further analysis we can generate reports that's the analysis part so we have a three-step procedure being defined in CFD so basically what numerical simulations help us with is quite very many advantages we have people using it in building designs we have uh, we have a lot of analysis being done at the biomedical sciences level for finding out if arteries will converge if the if there is a deposition of some um, some kind of uh, plaque inside an artery or we have also people using it in the weather forecasting industry and uh, of course for a lot of uh, uh, building designs uh, heat transfer or heat ventilation and um, a lot of um, uh, analysis as far as that is concerned for air conditioning applications we have chemical engineers using it off late for the last 20 years or 15 years or so and it is really making a lot of mark we have even open source solutions available now dedicated for chemical engineering applications so we have applications in aerospace we can see it can primarily be used for internal flows as well as external flows so these color, color pots um, you must have gone through them several times so we have in aerospace industry which is actually the bread and butter for CFT computational fluid dynamics has been used in aerospace industry for a lot of for I mean actually I can say more than the last 60 years or six decades and it has been used in a variety of fields for combustors for inside inside the cabin in around the air, airplanes around the wings around the fuselage around the tail section of the uh, the airplane for helicopters for, so there's a, there's been a lot of applications in aerospace industry in automobile industry again it's more of a blunt object that we are usually dealing with so there's a lot of pressure drag form drag uh, but again internal um, internal cooling for passenger comfort is also another part that we try to analyze in automobiles and a very important part is underhood thermal management that's a very important field again we have uh, the engine simulations being uh, conducted for automobile applications so automobile application is another field where CFD has great role to play in nowadays time in electronics we have applications for 
data center cooling, we have applications for um, PCB uh, cooling or we have um, heat sink performance being analyzed. We have applications in heat ventilation, air conditioning in rooms, in cabins, uh, for duct design, again, very many applications. So let's stay tuned for the subsequent lectures which are going to follow. Thank you very much for your attention.